So we check this area. It's called a waking watch. A fire warden patrolling a building that's become a fire hazard. Not a sight you want to see in your home, but the people who live here escaped Grenfell Tower. How does it make you feel that your mother is in another unsafe building? You've moved her from one death trap to another death trap. So for me, after living in Grenfell for 41 years, to be, sorry to say it, but burnt out of the building, yeah, waiting 18 months in a hotel, then to be given this, as far as mum's concerned, this is now going to be her home. So you've put her back in the same position she was three and a half years ago. This is another potential Grenfell. In the 1970s, Herman Harris was one of the first tenants to move into Grenfell. She lived there for 41 years until she had to be rescued from the burning building. How difficult was it seeing your home burn? Very stressful. It's more than I can say. It's very hard, very hard. God, that was my home. And how do you feel now being in another building that is deemed unsafe? Worse, because it just stresses me out. Leave from one place and come to another. Think I was safe in here, but I'm not. Because it's like you're in the, f in the fire and you're right back in the frying pan. It's not easy. It's like you go to bed in the night and you don't sure if you're going to get up in the morning with fire. It's very scary. The surprising thing about this block, it's a new build. It's just a few years old, bought by the council to house Grenfell survivors. But the scaffolding is back on this building. After Kensington and Chelsea found problems with fire protection between the floors, there's also unsafe doors and problems with the ventilation. I'm just appalled. So you think that they'd make sure that a property is fire safe, especially with the backdrop of Grenfell, especially because of the trauma people have been through, especially because they would have serious concerns if there are fire safety issues. And they didn't seem to have done any of that. And they've just moved her into this property. The council has offered Miss Harris alternative accommodation, but her lawyer says she doesn't trust RBKC to move her back in. But then if she moves out without a secure tenancy, which is what she had at Grenfell Tower, actually, uh, without a secure tenancy, you know, th there's a worry in her mind that they won't allow her back in again because the trust is broken down, the actual, you know, between her and the local authority. The council told us we've spoken with the families and we understand how worried they must be. Work is already underway to fix the issues with their building. Sadly, this is part of a national issue. This council, like many others, no longer has faith in the building industry. You've come from one fire into another, basically. So it's not about, oh yeah, look at what they've got, look what they've been given. <laughs> it's not about that. It's about our sanity and having peace of mind to know that where you're sleeping at night, that you are safe. I didn't expect this. I thought I would be safe because it's a brand new building, but it's not. Three and a half years since Grenfell, there are still homes right across London that are unsafe. It's a problem that just isn't going away. That's right. We've been reporting on unsafe homes since the fire in 2017. And if anything, the problem is getting worse, mm -hmm. not better. That report we've just seen, a Grenfell survivor living in a home that's deemed so unsafe it needs a 24-hour waking watch. Now, that block doesn't have flammable cladding like many other buildings still do, though it does have serious fire safety defects. But this is happening all over the country. There are 600 buildings in London with these waking watches. And it's often leaseholders that are paying very big bills they can't afford. And we're starting to see residents going bankrupt and even losing their homes now. It's all a reflection of what we've been seeing at the Grenfell Inquiry this year, a building industry with very poor regulation and no regard to fire safety. All right, Rags, thank you. A lot of people are very worried. Thanks.